Good day, folks. Some people were asking me what the uh, limits would be for the one wire system, how much current we could actually extract. And I was just saying without definite uh, data that it's basically a lot. You could combine plugs and whatnot and get more. But people wanted to know the specifics, right? And these are pretty advanced calculations. So what I did is I took the heavy side calculations and I made a small computer program which lets me input the um, basically the voltage and it gives me the equivalent heavy side of the one wire component. So I'm going to show you some calculations I've made here and I first decided to try with um, regular 110 volts AC basically the mains and as you see here the heavy side is actually quite low. We wouldn't be able to do much with this on its own but of course you know if we start this is not taking into consideration any other systems like grounds and antennas and anything like that and we already know we can enhance that but that's not part of these calculations this is just the raw off the wire without doing anything to it. So here I give you the um, the results for 110 volts which is not very much but for a trigger we can use and then I do the same again but for 1500 volts let's say we were to use a microwave transformer and step it up but as you notice I'm gonna show you right now here's the difference is very minimal but again it can do something if we use antennas and dedicated grounds that that jumps quite significantly but raw on its own is very minimal but look at this folks here's the interesting thing when you start to bring the voltage the pure potential up because the heavy side is a field which is um, voltage driven so we could trigger it with low current if we know how I've explained various methods of doing that of just using 45 ma to trigger a high voltage oscillator so with that said one of them that I had on one of my uh, video demonstrations was 150,000 volts high frequency oscillator and with a quick tube with six cap dumps it wasn't optimal but it was a test I was getting results around 3.3 watts even at first I thought there was something wrong I even got help with chat GPT asking these are the calculations these are my capacitors these are how often they're dumping you know is this really it and with that said I was able to charge and loop the battery overnight as well I did that test and it worked quite well so uh, with that said, I'm going to show you right now, and look at this, 30 some watts, it's possible when you jump to 150,000 volts and over, and it's in meters square, so that means something too, and I'm going to get to that in a moment, but it's just to show you the potential we have is significant, this is something, can you believe, and it lines up well with what I experimented with, because if we had a most optimal setup, and I will talk about that later on here on the whiteboard, that means that we could extract over 30 watts from the field strength if we knew how, just from the pure potential. So there really is something with the heavy side component, folks. But with that said, you really need to bring up the potential to start noticing a, a, a major um, conversion of back into current. So with that said, folks, let's see what we can come up with. I'll just go over to the whiteboard and explain it for you all. All right, folks, so let's take into consideration what I was talking about here. And uh, this is the heavy side one wire power here. So I already calculated that at 150 kilovolts, we get around 37.5 watts per meter square. So in order to be able to take advantage of this, as Bedini said in many ways sometimes, we have to work with nature. We can't force nature to give us something that it doesn't want to give us at its speed rate, its settings. So when we're dealing with field strengths, it works by meter square. It, 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 it in, in essence saturates the area with this field. So the thing is, we very difficult to capture all of that, but we could still use efficiently methods to capture the majority of it. So to get into this, um, here's an example which could work, okay? So the one wire system could drive a low resistance metal thick pipe here. And let's, this would be like a pretty big system, serious power folks, which would probably run outside if you have the space. So I'm thinking 10 meter square loop here, you see? Real thick pipe. And what we do is we run our oscillator right in the middle here. And we create a netting kind of like a capacitive top hat. It also won't hurt because they'll add capacitance 
to the system very similar to the top load, the top capacitor of a Tesla coil, I mean. And then we just build our net mesh like this. And that assures us that the voltage, you know, the distribution is, is as level as it can all around the loop here, with our generator being in the middle right here, triggered, let's say, at 45 milliamps only. Now, in order to be able to, this, what this means is the one wire is capable, it, as long as it has that voltage to give us 37.5 volts, but the kicker is it's every square meter. So what happens is, as much as you'd want to put a whole bunch of antennas concentrated in one square meter, you're limited to this is, people were asking me, you know, they were asking, what's the limit of the one wire system? Well, at 150,000 volts a square meter, this is in theory the most maximum you're gonna get. So again, we can't cheat nature, but we can work with it. So here's um, an example that we could use here. Let's say that at every um, meter, because it's every meter, so every meter along on this side of the pipe here will add an AV diode plug. So every um, meter, so that will have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all at least one meter spaced apart, okay? And we continue this all along the loop here. So what we do is we put our two diode plugs on each system here. Some people refer to it as the AV plug. So we got our two diodes that convert this field back into pulse DC form, all individual outputs here, you see? Now, because they're spaced apart, as long as we can maintain that pure potential along the feed and that it continues to the next meter, it can keep re-triggering it at every meter without additional stress. So, again, as long as we use a nice low resistance thick pipe to drive our loop with, you know, because there's going to be some internal resistance and if it's too big, you know, like miles, <laughs> that's not going to work. You're going to have too much resistance. So there is a fine maximum, maximal value that would work well. We still have to pay for the traditional resistances. And back in uh, the Edison days with his DC systems, anything over a quarter mile, he had a major loss. So the, the one wire system is great, but it also has you know, ev like everything else, everything has its limits, folks. And this is what we're trying to explore here and how to work with that. So now that we figured out our diode plugs here, we simply use it to charge our dumping capacitors, each stage as a capacitor. But what we do, folks, is we have an antenna on the ground cable that spreads out like, like a spider at every square meter with every plug. So what happens in Don Smith terms, reflection is one thing. We need to create the reflection to intensify the field and interact with it. But the reflection is one thing. You want to be able to catch that field as well. So this is what we're doing with the two systems here. So by spacing it this way, because the, the field needs that distance to work and, and bounce back and forth efficiently. Without that distance, you're still going to be able to extract, but not at its full potential. So now, let's say we have like 10 of these, now it would be like 37.5 times 10, and that's just on one side. Of course, there's traditional losses, and you may not be, even if we get a quarter of that, you know, charging capacitors, we're doing pretty good, folks. And then again, this side here, this side here, that side there. Again, this isn't a project for the uh, faint of heart, and it is quite a serious one, but I'm just, you know, the practical application, I realize most people wouldn't be able to do it this way, but I just want to explain the theory behind it and the possibilities, and I want to bring the information out there. So, but there's a more practical approach that could work, and I will show you this right now. This could be more of an at-home kind of generator. 
So what do we do? You find the biggest circular round core you can for building transformers usually. So here's a big round circular core. You do the same thing, your generator, and you feed, your co actual core feeds live as a one-wire system. So this might be, you know, this big, but still, you know. So what you're going to do is, you're going to put a, a, a coil loop around, and you do something like every 10 loops, you, you put a plug, one wire, then you keep it going. Every 10 loops, another plug, you keep it going, another 10 loop, another plug, 10 loop, another plug, 10 loop, another plug. Then it just goes on and on like that, around the whole core. And I'm sure you're starting to follow what this is going to do. Because if we feed it at 150,000 volts, even though we don't have meters of space here, we're still exposed to the 37.5 watts per meter that's all around here. So 37, even if it's just a singular system because we don't have the space, it's still a lot to work with considering, right? So we'll put our diode plugs on every one of these here, like we've been doing, and this becomes the one wire diode plug, the AV plugs here. So you get your plus and minus, cathode and anode, cathode and anode and you short one set together that feeds into the one wire here and now these can all discharge and charge their own capacitor dumps every one of these now so all together in the most efficient system in theory which would be hard to get it means that we would be able to collect close to the 37 we do the same game antenna wire antenna wire They'll be much closer together, they'll produce the same effect, but they'll be more all working unified to get that maximum out of that square meter that, that propagates around. Again, you got to create a reflection and you got to catch that reflection and convert it back to current. That's part of the trick. So, of course, this, you know, we could use grounds if you have a lot of them, which will intensify this somewhat. And with various systems can make up for the loss of not having the big one. But this is just another example that I want to show the put out there that would probably be more practical for, you know, solid state home type generators. So, okay, 37 best case scenario, we divide that in half because we have all our traditional losses and we don't have the most perfect system. So what do we do? Well, we run three or four of these as they're relatively small into one unit, right? I mean, spaced apart, obviously, but you still got the room. So that's tax, you know, times four here. So then you make up for it. You, you can get your, your 100 watts, your 200 watts, even one kilowatt, if you were diehard enough to, to have enough of these. But again, there's gonna be a certain distance because you don't wanna, you're still limited by, Basically, every core should be one meter from each other for, for them not to interfere. But with that said, nothing stops you from each having their own voltage generator being driven at 45 MA. Figure out how you want to route your, your, your trigger power sources times four, which is still peanuts on the input, folks. And in theory, you can get yourself hundreds of watts right on the kitchen table. Of course, there's more you can even, someone can really go far with this stuff, you know. We could take the one wire that comes out of here, and if we know the frequency, we can play around with resonance LC. We can add another coil here, another capacitor here, and this feeds the one wire system. This will amplify our pure potential on every plug just by using resonance. So if you want to take into consideration what kind of systems you could use in there to make up for the loss of what I recommended, the, the first one would obviously work better because 
you're, you're, you're playing with nature the way nature wants to play. Here we're trying to create, you know, shortcuts. It'll work to varying degrees, you'll never recover all of it, but you may be recovering the majority, which is better than nothing. It's just at the expense of your work and your time and your research to be able to actually build it like this. So again, I just hope I clarified it and I really enjoyed the calculations because it gives you an idea of the theoretical limits of what to aim for, what you can get, a bit of motivation and you know at least it solidifies that we're in the right direction and if anyone wants to mess around with it I will release the source code of the program, it's just a few lines of code on Python and you can run it on your Linux, on your Mac, anything you want I'll have the link through my form and with that said, I just hope everyone has a wonderful day and I'm looking forward, like usual, to all your comments and suggestions. So with all that said, folks, some closing remarks here. This is why, and I hope you can see it now, that I keep stressing to use very low to zero current on your trigger for your RF oscillators because you see now, according to the heavy side calculations, when you have some very, very high potentials, of 150,000 volts or more, even at 48 MA, that field, the heavy side component of it, becomes the equivalent of like close to a 40 watt RF field swooshing all around you. 40 watts, folks, that's serious. And if even that, if not done correctly, could get you in potential troubles. So not only is it good for our triggers and efficient, but there's also the safety aspect of regulations as well. And you can see what kind of havoc this would cause if you start running 50, 100 watts in the input plus what you're getting. You get all this mixing that the RFI would be like horrible. So with that said, I hope you see and, and better visualize that these systems here are not current driven. We just use a potential as a trigger, pure potential folks. One wire system, we convert our current later down the line. This is the most efficient way and this is the way I think is more practical in the direction to go. And my apologies if some people don't see it that way, but I, I'm trying my best to, to put the point across anyways. So people know why it is I do it the way I do it here. And with that said, I will post the programs for you if you want to run them. But just a bit of a note of caution here. Um, it's not a problem in the program that no matter what frequency you use, you get the same results. With the heavy side component, it does the same thing regardless of the frequency as far as the um, uh, RMS field values go. The only difference is with a faster frequency, you get more RMS peak voltages. So they come in more often, which essentially, if you're looking at it as amps a second discharges, like how we charge and discharge capacitors, what that means is you'll have the same field, but you'll be able to dump the capacitors a little faster because the higher frequency gives you more in that one second period, those peak RMS values. So, um, so with that said, I hope that everyone understands better and have yourselves all a great day.